Looking around a small town outside San Antonio, thanks to Greg for that great footage, but we need to move on to the weather. We've got a major weather system across the high plains into the central Rockies. There it is, surface cyclone located in southeastern Wyoming and an extensive wind field covering Colorado, New Mexico, Kansas, and Texas. Let's take a look at those winds. This chart shows extensive sustained winds of 30 to 40 knots and a few gusts over 50 around Goodland, Lamar, Colorado, Albuquerque, and up there around Farmington, New Mexico. It was a little bit windy earlier. Let me run that back a couple of hours. And there you can see a lot more of those 50 knot wind pennants. So conditions are improving, but this has kicked up a lot of dust. And these haze symbols, that's where the detector thought it was haze, but it was actually dust. It doesn't look like an extensive dust storm today. There is some heavy dust up there in the Four Corners area and some lighter dust from west of Amarillo up to about Goodland. And in between, wildfire smoke. The dust being kicked up as well in West Texas. Can't see it as good due to the extensive low cloud, but there it is. From Lubbock through Amarillo and up to Dumas and Boise City. And even at White Sands, New Mexico, getting some dust lifted off of that dry lake bed. So there's the situation, a triple point from south of Pierre down to about Dodge City, Midland, Texas, the deeper moisture just to the east. And we are getting some storms forming. Looks like that's back behind the dry line around Dalhart and then further up the boundary. Looks like some towers going up east of North Platte and plenty of dust coming up there through Goodland up to North Platte itself behind the dry line. And then we hit the warm front, the upslope flow. You can see that coming in from the east-northeast, feeding these thunderstorms south of Rapid City and others up there north of Cheyenne. So I did want to confirm that dry line location. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to start with southwest Kansas because it's a little more obvious there. I think that dry line might be right on Dodge City. You can see the 40s out to the west and the nice rich 60s east of there. Further south, a little bit of wind convergence through the Guyman area. And I think that dry line gets a little more diffuse. I might go ahead and bring it just east of Amarillo, kind of like that. You can see that southeasterly wind right there around, uh, what is that, Borger? And then coming down south, maybe right on top of the Lubbock area. And this is the kind of thing you want to do when you analyze the weather during the afternoon. Coming up into Kansas there, the dry line gets more well-defined. So that's going to carry it just west of Kearney, out around Russell, and then back, of course, to Dodge City. So that's very important, figuring out where your moisture is, where your boundaries are. And one thing that I'm already seeing is there's just not much convergence along that dry line. You can still get storms forming, but we really want to see those winds coming together and helping to focus that point convergence that is ideal for supercell development. So that's one thing that this convection is fighting with. And then the cold core out there in Utah producing some thunderstorms all the way down into the Grand Canyon region. Elsewhere around the country, the northern plains seeing precipitation due to overrunning isentropic lift and some fog associated with that upslope flow. You can see things are a lot warmer, only a very small trace of snow. And down south of the warm front temperatures up to the 80s, all the way up into Illinois. In the Pacific, it is quieting down a little bit. 1028 millibar high off of California 
and then taking that further to the north. Occlusion, south of Alaska, temperatures remaining fairly mild in the Alaskan interior. However, still a lot of cold air. Sorry about that, had to resize the charts. The Canadian high Arctic, still a lot of sub-zero temperatures. We're seeing minus 15 there, east of Cambridge Bay. You don't see too many weathercasts talking about the Canadian Arctic, but all of this stuff does have an effect on our weather, even indirectly. Pretty quiet in the Atlantic. And then going down into Newfoundland, there goes an outgoing system. Very mild temperatures in the 30s and 40s. Some fresh polar air coming down through Quebec, but even there, temperatures mostly in the 30s down around Montreal. All right, are you all feeling grounded and pumped up? Got a good understanding of what's happening, hopefully. Now we can go into some of the forecast aspects. And SBC, they have an enhanced risk from around North Platte through Dodge City and Amarillo. And the slight risk goes all the way down southwest of Lubbock. And let's check out their tornado potential. There it is, pretty much evenly distributed, but there's another centroid in southwestern South Dakota. That's going to be due to a combination of higher RH with the cool air north of the warm front, as well as the backed winds enhancing the low-level shear. And this stuff further south, that's going to be the dry line. Yeah, why don't we go straight to the dynamical models, look at those signals. It looks like one little cell up there near Garden City, south to about Liberal. That's going to be right around dark, so maybe a little LP-ish storm. Again, these are just the model indications. A few scattered cells in western Kansas. Doesn't look like those organized very much. And then looks like an MCS coming together, not that strong. That's going to be around midnight and that'll probably surge eastward. Looks very forced. So probably a strong cap with a pretty strong outflow pool driving that. Yeah, look at that cap. But the shear, yeah, that's quite impressive. A little more instability, weaker cap. We would probably have a Greensburg type of day. And then a look at the indications further north. Looks like around... 6 or 7 p.m., the model going for some supercells out there southeast of Pierre. That's kind of the area we were looking at on Wednesday. So that differs a little bit from the SPC guidance. They're focusing on this area here. So that poses some interesting questions. Will that happen? So apparently we need to be looking at this area for those possibilities. Let's look at the forecast sounding. Yeah, I don't know about tornadoes because that RH looks pretty low. 55 degree dew point tapering off to 50 up at about 7,000 and temperatures very high. That's quite a temperature dew point spread. So a lot of these storms will probably be producing some good outflow pools. So they'll be cycling, getting undercut, and cycling again. And the shear... Not really impressive, but it is backed. And yeah, there certainly are storms going up. I don't like those anvils. They look kind of a little bit mushy, disorganized. We're still a little bit early in the convective development phase. Another couple hours, and those should organize a little bit better if they don't get undercut and ingest all that cooler air up north. The cells further down the dry line, those could also move northeast and intensify. It all depends on the available thermodynamics. In any case, very interesting situation. And where do we go to assess those thermodynamics? The surface chart, of course, and the boundary looks to be about right here, maybe bowing up a little bit and then coming back south. So the Moisture looks to be a little bit better as you get out there around uh, whatever station that is. 
looks like north of Yankton. And as you go further to the east, you get back behind that dry line. I think that's what we were picking up on the sounding. And then the dry line itself, back from that triple point, and then arcing back. So really, that area right there does have a chance of coming together. That bears watching. I really wish there was an overlay with the actual cells so we could kind of relate that to the boundaries. In any case, yeah, they could keep going. And as they get northeast of that line right there, that's going to really deepen the cold layer and the storms will become elevated as they reach that region. And of course, there's the radar where it all comes together and we can even see the boundaries themselves. So it looks fairly elevated so far down in Nebraska, very wide temperature dew point spreads. And then the better stuff up there in South Dakota. This is a very problematic area for storms because it's so far from all the radars. So there's our cell there, west of Mitchell, moving north. And it has a very limited window, maybe an hour to an hour and a half, to produce severe weather before it gets into the colder air at the surface, the deeper, colder air. Could still have more cells coming in from the south and southwest, but that's unknown at this time. That appears to be the warm front right here. We can see a change in the textures, a change from cloud streets to more of a diffuse, maybe transverse band pattern out there around Sioux Falls. Any severe weather indications on this? Not yet. There is kind of a reflectivity gradient right there. The other thing that we want to do is kind of assess overhang. That's going to be a problem in a highly sheared environment like this, but so far it looks like there's not much tilt on this storm. It probably does help that those tops are not leaning downwind, so they're somewhat vertical. Echo tops pretty good up there to about 50,000. And the radar, of course, out this way. We'll take it up to 1.3 degrees. Yeah, it is developing a meso right there. I haven't really accounted for the storm motion. Let me put that in. Kind of normalize that field a little bit. There we go. There's our meso. Inbounds right here, outbounds here. That's going to be a shear magnitude of about maybe 45, 50 knots for the VR, the rotational velocity. So that'll bear watching. The meso located right there. Up at about 15, 16,000 feet. And that's going to be right in this part of the storm here. So I would expect in the low levels, it would probably show something a little bit different. Maybe a weak echo region right there, maybe the updraft, the lower reflectivity is right there, and maybe more of a slightly curved hook shape. So if I was chasing, I'd probably want to be up there. By the time you get this video, it will have moved on. Anyway, that's a look at South Dakota. So there's the live view from Big Rig Steve in northeastern Oklahoma around Tulsa. So he is cutting right through that low-level moisture. You can see the... Welcome to Big Cabin, Oklahoma! <laughs> He's... Not a small cabin, not a little cabin, but big cabin. Yeah, you never know what you're going to get on his channel. Yes. The moisture heading north from left to right. And the hazy look there due to the high dew points, the high moisture content. And he's heading more towards the west as he takes this exit. I really love the views of the sky on this channel. He's always got that camera pointed a little bit above the horizon. So plenty to see. And he's heading into one of those famous toll plazas. We'll take a quick look at that. So yeah, dew points in that area in the upper 60s. Let's take a look at that surface chart. So he is about right there, pretty much right in line with that low-level jet, maybe a little bit to the east of that moist axis. 
and the deeper moisture just to the west where we have the broken overcast. And you can see it on the satellite. He's located about right there. The moisture heading north and the air has a very capped look along the axis of that moisture. And the storm's going up, heading into southwestern Kansas at this hour. Plenty of dust out there from Amarillo to Lubbock. Anyway, we have to wrap this up and get it uploaded because the clock is ticking. Things are moving fast. This thing still has to render and upload. And the longer we make the video, the longer that's going to take. So we'll go ahead and sign off now. No new Patreon supporters, but I do appreciate Jason Walls, David Fick, Brian Nieben, Jesse Newsom, Brett Rose, and Craig Howe for helping to chip in. I really appreciate that. Hope you all have a great weekend. Take care, and we'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Have a good one. Bye-bye.